OK, hi there. Welcome to a fiscal policy revision video. We're going to spend a few minutes looking at the important concept of automatic stabilisers. In any exam question about fiscal policy, uh, your analysis is going to be strengthened if you're able to make a distinction between discretionary fiscal policy. And a good example is a decision by the government to cut the basic rate of tax or to introduce the furlough scheme during the pandemic. That's discretionary fiscal policy and automatic stabilisers. Now, automatic fiscal stabilisers kick in automatically, uh, immediately, if you like, when the economy moves into a slowdown or even worse, uh, it moves into a recession. Now, both discretionary and automatic uh, stabilisers can have quite important effects. But this video is going to look at automatic stabilisers, which begs the question, what are they? What are fiscal automatic stabilisers? Well, essentially, they're automatic, immediate changes as the economy moves through different stages of the, the business cycle. A good example uh, is if the economy goes into a recession, then the government takes less in tax from both households and businesses. And also it tends to spend more automatically on the total level of welfare, especially when unemployment is going up. So let's just quickly work through a couple of chains of reasoning explaining how automatic stabilisers work. Essentially, they refer to how fiscal instruments, tax and spend, will influence the rate of, of uh, GDP growth and help to counter swings, if you like, to reduce the volatility of the business cycle. Now, during periods of very strong growth, rapid growth, the boom phase of the economic cycle, uh, automatic stabilisers will help to reduce the growth rate. Uh, because with high growth, tax revenues will go up as, as households' real incomes and corporate profits grow. Unemployment tends to fall, so therefore the government will receive more tax revenue, especially if people are moving into those higher tax bands. As well as that, government welfare spending will then drop during a, uh, during a boom because more people are in work, more people are earning money and therefore require less uh, state financial support. Unemployment will be going down, so the government will spend less on unemployment benefit, for example. So this combination of increased tax and decreased welfare causes a fall in the budget deficit. Government finances will improve. It might even lead to the government being able to run a possible fiscal surplus. Now, the key point is that automatically the government is taking more out in tax and spending less on welfare. So in that sense, fiscal policy is taking income out of the circular flow and automatic stabilisers help to moderate the boom. However, during a recession, during an economic recession, a real output, real GDP is contracting, employment is falling, and as people's real incomes go down, they pay less in both direct and indirect taxes. Companies making less profit, so they'll pay less corporation tax. So taxes go down uh, and government spending on welfare goes up, particularly things like universal credit. Um, so the increase in benefit spending and the fall in tax collection will cause the budget deficit to go up. Uh, but that means that uh, fiscal policy is, is providing now a net injection into the circular flow. And therefore, automatic stabilisers will help limit the severity of, uh, of a recession. I think this chart shows this really well. This is in, in orange, that's total government spending, uh, rising to over a trillion pounds in 2020. And the blue line shows tax revenues. Now, you can see as, before we, as we headed into the, uh, the years before the pandemic, the gap between government spending and taxes was falling. The budget deficit was shrinking. Still a deficit, spending was greater than revenue. But then in 2020, the pandemic hit, GDP fell by 10%. Uh, government spending surged, obviously, the welfare, the furlough scheme and many other policies. Uh, tax revenues fell, and as a result, the budget deficit increased to nearly £300 billion. That is essentially partly caused by the automatic stabilisers kicking in. And this chart shows the monthly amount of government borrowing since 1997. Very rare you get a surplus, but occasionally. But look what happened in 2020. Suddenly the government was borrowing billions in every month uh, to help offset the impact of the, of the COVID-induced recession. 
And this is a comparison of cumulative monthly government borrowing uh, in the UK over three years. You can see the blue line there. That was the year before the pandemic. Cumulatively, the government was borrowing about 50 billion in the end. Then the orange line shows the year of recession and the lockdowns with the budget deficit surging to over £300 billion. The figures for 2021 look a little bit more optimistic. Borrowing is well down on last year, but still well above what it was uh, the year before the pandemic. Quick evaluation. Uh, don't forget, automatic stabilisers are designed to influence the rate of growth to, to uh, counter swings in the economic cycle. But how effective are they? Well, the impact... Uh, depends in part on whether the government allows the automatic stabilisers to actually operate. So, for example, so, some governments may introduce fiscal austerity. We had that in the last, in the, as, a, as a response to the a global financial crisis. Osborne and, and um, uh, Cameron introduced fiscal austerity. The automatic stabilisers, therefore, were not allowed full reign to have their impact. Um, the impact also depends on the relative the relative generosity and the scope of welfare. So, for example, what are the base level payments each week for universal credit or unemployment support? Clearly, the more generous is the welfare system, the larger will be the potential automatic stabiliser effects. And crucially, this is a great theory point to put into evaluation, the impact depends on the marginal propensity to spend and save of those households whose income is given a lift by welfare during a recession. So if, if universal credit kicks in, more people claim it, what's the propensity to spend that extra income as opposed to save it? When the propensity to spend is high, then the automatic stabiliser effect, stabilizer effects tend to be quite, uh, quite significant. So there we go. If you're revising fiscal policy for your exams in the summer, I think it's a great idea to have a knowledge of automatic stabilisers. Thanks for joining in. See you soon.